Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing a bit of calculus. And uh, in calculus, we will take up the drawing of graphs. This problem came up in ISI B star B math entrance. And while we draw the graph of this function, we will take sort of a tour of the entire calculus. That is, we will be using derivatives, the notion of maxima and minima, the notion of roots of a function convexity and concavity, inflection points, all of these ideas that we learn in an entire course of calculus, all of them will be used in this one problem. So there is a lot to learn. Uh, let's get started. So we have this function which is f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. And the problem says that we have to find a graph. So we have to find a graph of this function. So how do we go about it? The first step, this is to investigate the roots if you can. Okay, roots means the values of x that makes the function 0. So, by inspection, by inspection, that means just by looking at the function, you can see that x equals to minus 1 actually works. x equals to minus 1. Why? I mean, let's plug it in. Minus 1 cube minus 3 times minus 1 square plus 4. This is negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. So, that's that's x equal to minus 1, one of the roots. Now, I will be using something called the factor theorem. What is the factor theorem? The factor theorem says that if x equal to minus 1 is a root of a polynomial, then x plus 1, which is basically x minus minus 1, is a factor of this polynomial. That means this thing directly divides the polynomial. So in a separate video, I have talked about factor theorem, remainder theorem, and all of those things. We discuss these things at length in our ISI and CMI entrance programs and in Math Olympiad programs. You can check the link in the description for more detail. But we will be just using the factor theorem here. Okay? So let's divide x plus 1, let's divide x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4 by x plus 1. And you will see that the um, quotient is x squared minus 4x plus 4. That, that is what the quotient is if you divide it. It's a simple polynomial division. You can try it at your home. Now, this particular quantity is simply x minus 2 whole squared. So, the polynomial that we started off with, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4, we have completely factorized it. And we have f of x is equal to x plus 1 times x minus 2 whole squared. That means the roots are minus 1 and plus 2. And there is a repeated root at positive 2. There is a repeated root at positive 2. So now if I try to draw, start drawing a sketch of the graph. Let's draw the y-axis and the x-axis. Let's mark the roots. Let's mark the roots. And let's see what happens in different intervals of the x-axis. This is sometimes known as the number line strategy. Number line strategy. So what happens in the region where x is less than negative 1? Well, think about it carefully. If x is less than negative 1, x plus 1 is negative, And x minus 2 whole squared is always positive. It's always positive because it's a square quantity. But actually, it's always non-negative. It's 0 at x equals to 2. 
but other than x equals to 2 it's always positive so if x is less than minus 1 then this quantity is negative and then this whole quantity is negative because negative times positive is negative therefore the graph is somewhere here it's below the y axis below the x axis it's in the negative zone after x equals to 1 it's in the positive zone it's in the positive zone it's always in the positive zone x equal after x equals to negative 1 it's from the right hand side from here it's always in the positive zone because this is positive and this is always positive so we sort of know how the graph will shape up okay one more thing we can sort of directly guess that this must come from below like this must must cut to the x-axis at this point and then if it goes up when we have to check whether it goes up it must come down after a while to touch the x-axis one more time because they're, they're, that, that's how you will get the second root and then it will go to the positive infinite we go upward infinite cube you can also see and this is a sort of a step zero what happens when x goes to positive infinity and x goes to negative infinity this is an analysis that you will be using so if x goes to positive infinity x cube will eventually be very very big positive number right it will be far larger than negative x squared plus 4 so this entire quantity f of x that is will go to positive infinity when x goes to positive infinity this is sort of called the domination factor x cube dominates the rest of the terms similarly when x goes to negative infinity x cube also goes to negative infinity because again x cube will lower the total value and it will dominate the rest of the terms because it's the highest power so in a way we know that as x goes to negative infinity the negative infinity is this way the graph will sort of plunge down and as x goes to positive infinity the graph will sort of move up but we will actually do more analysis so the third step or rather the step two first step was to find the roots the step two was to look at the first derivative the first derivative or f prime x so what is the first derivative the first derivative is 3x squared minus 6x that's it that's the first derivative so let me write it here 3x squared minus 6x so now you can take 3x common you have x minus 2 so you have two critical now points x equal to 0 and x equals to 2 so there are two critical points x equal to 0 and x equals to 2 and we have to check whether the function has a maxima or a minima at these points so to check that I will be doing the second derivative the second derivative which is f double prime x which happens to be 6x minus 6 right now at x equal to 0 at x equal to 0 which was one of the critical points let's plug it in in the second derivative so f double prime 0 is equal to negative 6 which means at x equal to 0 we have a maxima a local maxima that's called sometimes known as the second derivative test if the second derivative is negative and the fir first derivative is 0 that's a local maxima similarly if you plug in f, f in f double prime x if you plug in 2 you will get 6 which is positive that means at x equal to 2 we have a local minima local minima it's very important to use the word local because it might not be 
the global maximum or minimum. And it will not be in this particular graph, you will see. So I can now draw the graph a little bit more. At x equal to 0, there is a maxima and you can check what is the value of the function at x equal to 0. f of 0 is simply 4. So at 0, 4, at 0, 4, we have a maxima like this. And at 2, 0, so if I plug in the value 2 in the function, I would get 0 because it's also a root. So therefore, there is a local minima here. So it's like this. So I have drawn the local maxima and the local minima. And I'm almost done with drawing the function. Because after this, I know I can simply draw it like this. It will go up, right? To the infinity. But there is a slight, you know, subtlety that you have to take care of here. Because it can go up in two different ways. It can go up like this or it can go up like this this is sometimes known as concave up and concave down and so this is uh, the study of inflection points and convexity and concavity of a particular graph and i will talk about it right now so let's look at the second derivative the second derivative is so that's the fourth thing that we are doing convexity so, so let's study the second derivative. The second derivative is 6 times x minus 1. That is what the second derivative is. So when x is greater than 1, when x is greater than 1, if double prime x is positive, it's positive. And when x is less than 1, when x is less than 1, if double prime x is negative. Which means that when x is greater than 1, the function is concave up. Concave up. And when x is less than 1, it is concave down. Concave down. Concave down means the rate of change of the slope actually decreases. So, if this is the slope and the function is concave down, then the rate of the slope will be less steep. So, it's like this. In the next step, the slope is much lesser steep. So, it's like this. So, I'm just kind of drawing the tangents of the function. So, the, the function is increasing. Suppose it is increasing in a particular interval. Then, the, if the slopes are decreasing, the steepness of this tangent lines, if that is decreasing, then we call it concave down. Okay. So now we know for x equal to x less than 1, the function is concave down. So we can now draw it more. It's like this. So it is here. Like this. So notice what just happened. Below, so this is x equal to 1. The convexity changes at this particular point. So, up to this point, up to this point is very important. The slope, the steepness of the slope actually decreases. The steepness of the slope, the tangent line that actually decreases. And after this point, this is the inflection point. After this point, the steepness of the slope actually increases. The steepness of the slope actually increases. So it's concave up. So for example, if the slope was like this here, it will be steeper here. So maybe I can draw it in a different color. If the slope is here like this, at this point, if I draw the slope, it's much more much more upright so the steepness of the tangent line increases the second derivative is positive and that is concave up so now we have drawn the entire function and at x equal to 1 and you can plug it in in the actual function so f of 1 
f of 1 is 1 minus 3 plus 4, which is 5 minus 3, which is 2. At 1 comma 2, we have an inflection point. An inflection point. What does it mean? It means that it was concave down and now it became concave up. So the steepness of the slope was decreasing and at inflection point, the steepness of the slope increases. The inflection point can be found where the second derivative is zero or undefined. So you have to test it. The second derivative is zero. In this case, it is zero at x equal to y. So now we have the entire picture. It's beautiful how different parts of calculus came into play when we actually tried to solve this particular problem. I hope you learned something today. If you are willing to join the community of mathematicians at Chanda, you can check the link in the description and join us through WhatsApp. Uh, we have paid and also free services. So please join us and let's do some good mathematics together. All right. All right. Take care. I'll say see you in the next one. And until then, keep on doing good mathematics. Bye.